Hi everyone. I will be talking about routing protocol in wireless mesh network. This uh, paper is not technical, it's uh, more of conceptual, so I hope uh, all of you will surely go back something new after this. This was written exactly 10 years ago uh, from Canada, Waterloo University. And uh, I will be working a lot more on Internet of Things technologies quite deeply in the next year to come. So I thought of uh, revising this thing. And uh, this paper, in a way, is uh, really coming full circle for me. And I can only connect the dot backwards to exactly 10 years ago. For my undergraduate in electrical engineering, my final year project was on position-based routing protocol for mobile ad hoc network. So let me talk a little bit about it. So my professor from I-Square, where uh, Brahim works and uh, used to work, DSI isn't part of I-Square? Yeah. Okay. okay, sorry. Uh, used to work and Huisien also graduated uh, from I-Square R Research Institute, some of you might have heard. So my prof gave me this uh, problem, like how do ships that are parked uh, at the Singapore's near the coast but it's uh, about 20 kilometers away from the coast get internet so how do ships get uh, traditionally internet from the set from s satellite right and what you it's very expensive you really have to go there and come down and if you have relatives or friends working in the shipping industry and they go sailing out there you don't have internet so my prof basically was like uh, using this uh, wireless network called WiMAX maybe some of you have heard of it WiMAX we are going to uh, make each of the ships as a node and using point to point multi hop, it's going to come back right to the shore and communicate with the cell tower there. So at least the ships, uh, you know, at the coast of Singapore will have uh, Internet instead of communicating with the satellite. So my my problem was uh, to devise a routing protocol. And that will be basically location based using the latitude and longitude and you know all the ships are moving and that's why it's called Manet, Mobile Ad Hoc Network. So I did that project, okay, and I graduated and I was like, okay, that's it, throw away. And but guess what? It comes back and bite me again because I have to study a little bit in depth of, about what wireless mesh network is. And uh, today wireless mesh network, it's just coming up. If you can see your home network, you will hear new technologies such as Zigbee or Z-Wave coming up. And these are basically mesh network as well. Sure, they are not wide area like the ship. They are within a room or within a building. So that's what uh, I decided to read this paper and go through some of the concepts to consider when designing this. So uh, I will start off with the topology. And I think this is something all of us will understand. There are two different, there are many different kinds of topology, but the ones that we are familiar with is star topology. So if you talk in terms of Wi-Fi router, so the hackerspace has a Wi-Fi router and all of our laptops or mobile uh, phones are basically connecting to it. So it's like a star. So the node at the center of it is the router. And similarly, our mobile phone as well, right? So we have all the mobile phone and then with the wide area network, the cell tower is basically at the center of it. Uh, Bluetooth and satellites is also similar, it's star topology. But mesh network is something different. Uh, they basically talk to one another, there's not such central thing. So Zigbee and Z-Wave can be configured as a star topology, but it can also be configured as a mesh network. And uh, so is LoRaWAN, so it can be configured both as star and mesh. So there is a value in having mesh network. So what is the advantage of having wireless mesh network? So the first thing is the last mile connectivity. So imagine uh, today in a remote village in Africa, from the city, if you want to deploy internet connectivity to the villages, the last mile, you do not have to install wires. So you can just connect access points and then you will have uh, internet. It is also low cost of deployment because you do not have wires or fibers to uh, uh, implement. Also rapid deployment, just make the access point go there. It can also be self-organizing each of the node, self-optimizing, fault tolerant. You can use it to set up ad hoc networks and then again, bring it down again, set it up again. And also sensor networks. Sensor networks are uh, environmental monitoring networks. And that's something I think um, I'm interested in. So these are basically the advantages of a wireless mesh network. So it's called WMN. It is uh, different, slightly different from Manet, which is mobile ad hoc wireless network. So they're slightly different. Uh, in wireless mesh networks, the nodes are not moving, whereas in Manet, the nodes are moving. 
So let me talk a little bit about what are the challenges in wireless mesh network as compared to the traditional network that we are all aware with. First is point-to-point -point, uh, multi-hop. So you are not directly connecting to the router. You have to kind of hop and then go to the uh, final destination. Using this, there's also a high demand of quality to ensure that whatever packet you kind of initiated, it must reach the destination. So I want to talk a little bit about the different types of mesh networks. So firstly, so and uh, the paper talks about three different uh, types. Firstly, the mobility, the power, and the traffic pattern. The mobility is quite obvious. Uh, each of the nodes is moving. Like uh, my final year project, the nodes were ships. And in future, you might have cars moving and they might like communicate with one another on the road for, let's say, some kind of autonomous or driverless safety detection uh, algorithm. So in this case, all the cars are moving. But if you have uh, some kind of sensor nodes, they are kind of fixed. They are not moving. So in this case, the design considerations will change. The second thing is power. Are each of the nodes having power or not? Uh, for the case of a car, yes, it has power. If it is a sensor network, it might have power. But if um, you know it is a low power powered by battery, it not, might not have power. So in this case, once again, your routing protocol has to take note of that. You cannot be sending, I don't know, huge amount of data and then at a very high frequency, you might drain out the battery. The next part is the traffic pattern. Where exactly is the data going to? Is it just going to the next node and communicating with one another? Or in the case of ship, it's all going to the cell tower uh, for connectivity. So these are three types of things to consider in terms of mesh network. Uh, the typical mesh network architecture has these three things. And I think this is quite similar to maybe our mobile uh, cellular network as well. There's a network gateway, which has an access to the wired internet, the big or internet it might or might not have that there's also access points like this these are assumed to be static they are not moving and uh, they are also assumed to be uh, very fault tolerant and they have unlimited power which means they have connection to the power the mobile nodes in this case can be your mobile phone uh, can be se sensors moving around and uh, uh, they can vary in computation and transmission and power uh, I thought uh, this is not from the paper, but the paper did speak about different types of networks. So when designing mesh network, you have to consider the area that you're trying to cover. So there are four different types. Uh, one is personal network. And I think some of you, how many of you have already have Fitbits and you are communicating with your mobile phone? It's basically around your body. And that, or even, um, our MRT cards are what? RFID is it? Or oh, NFC? Or NFC. RFID. Yeah. NFC? NFC, no. NFC, no. All right. So RFID or NFC are even shorter range, right? When uh, barcode as well, like short range. Barcode is not uh, electronics, but yeah. Uh, so RFID and uh, NFC is even shorter. Then comes the area, uh, the personal area network. And in personal area network, you have the Bluetooth low energy as well as Bluetooth. And then you have uh, WLAN, which is the wide area network. This is where uh, 802.11, which is the Wi-Fi. And then if you go slightly bigger, this is where you will have the urban infrastructure coming in. This is like beyond our room. And that's where you have things like Wysan or Zigbee. Now Zigbee has a lot of different types of implementation. One of them can be inside your room for a smaller area. The other one can be a wider area. And of course the large one is the wide area network, which is the cellular network, how our mobile phone works outside our rooms. Z Zigbee can go to 10 kilometers. Yeah, so there are different different implementations. So Zigbee, I I think it depends on the physical layer. Uh, maybe Hussein can uh, correct me if I'm wrong. Um, the, I'm not sure too. Yeah. <laughs> the ones that I've heard of is uh, the lower range. So yeah, I, but, I but, yeah, but they have very different types of implementation, how you implement they Zigbee. Have the, they have lower frequency Zigbees that can go for yeah. multiple kilometers. Yeah. So Zigbee is not just one type. It, it can be configured in very different ways. Um, and of course, so, you know, uh, our cellular that we use with our mobile phone is basically for high power uh, because our mobile phone, if you notice, we have to charge it every day, right? But uh, in future, there's something uh, coming up that's called low power wide area network. And in many countries, in fact, I read the news recently, like South Korea is implementing, it's called 
LP land, LP WAN, and you will hear this term more and more. So whenever they will say things like, oh, you know, this country is implementing an IoT network, which is different from your cellular network, it basically means that uh, they will support low power wide area network, which means they have low bandwidth because it, it will just send you a very tiny amount of info, not like your mobile phone, it will send voice and data. And it will be wide area, just like your cellular network as well. So the LP uh, WAN is something you will keep hearing about. And I believe LoRa WAN is something that is open, whereas the rest of the implementations like Sigfox, uh, in fact, Hackerspace had a Sigfox project uh, a couple of years back. Mm -hmm. Sigfox or others are not uh, are proprietary. But it seems that they're all based on the physical layer 802.15.4 physical layer. So all the WP WANs have uh, the same physical layer and they basically have proprietary layers on top. So I, I feel this is very important for us to segregate, like, you know, like these are the different kinds of uh, network coverage. All right, so ne next, uh, what are the different characteristics of a wireless mesh network? So the, the paper talks about four different characteristics, uh, transmission medium, uh, the way you deploy it, the technology, and the infrastructure. So in terms of transmission medium, you definitely have to take care of the bandwidth. You know, like Wi-Fi is high bandwidth, whereas BLE is low. And, and they're always trade off. I remember uh, Kang Meng, if you know uh, that guy. But anyway, he showed me once this, uh, Never mind, you don't have to know him. <laughs> Ouch. <laughs> he basically showed me uh, this wireless uh, triangle of, um, like you have to uh, sacrifice in one of the ways. So the three points are power, uh, range, and data rate. So you have to give up one thing. In terms of NFC, you're giving up on range, right? It's very short range. In terms of uh, Wi-Fi, you're giving up on power because you need high power. So you so in terms of uh, bandwidth, you have to consider what kind of bandwidth you need. For mobile, it's high bandwidth. For sensor networks, maybe a low bandwidth will do. Uh, changes in link capacity, that might be due to weather conditions or interference or noise as well. So what is your network exposed to? Is your network exposed to weather conditions? Is your network just in an indoor, very safe condition? Next is asymmetrical link. I believe this means uh, the upward or the downward link, like whether it can be different or it has to be same, the upward and the download. Uh, maybe it's not even downloading anything, you know, maybe but just like uh, in terms of uh, uh, measuring, say, pollution of the urban city. Maybe it just needs an upward link and not, nothing to download at all. Next, in terms of uh, network deployment, mobility, like I said, every node, is it moving like the ship or the car? Is it static? Uh, it can be a hybrid as well. Some can be moving, some can be uh, um, kind of fixed. And this is where the edge of the network uh, can come in handy, where it can be a bit of hybrid. The wireless technology, uh, uh, you have to consider the type of antenna you're using. So when it's omnidirectional, you cannot have a high throughput. But when you have a very directional antenna, you have a better throughput. So this is something to consider. And finally, network infrastructure. Um, are you going to have like hands off and let them manage it themselves kind of autonomous way? Or are you going to do some like a, a single node that kind of manages some of them? Uh, and that's something you have to decide. Uh, I thought this was uh, pretty interesting. So uh, this paper uh, kind of uh, segregated wi wireless mesh network into three types. One is the MANET that I talked about, the mobile ad hoc network, each nodes are moving, the wireless sensor network and wireless mesh network. So let's look at the topology. Do you remember the topology that I said? So, and it's also compared with wired networks. So let's say your laptop connected to the ethernet cable will be a wired network. So in this case, it's uh, totally static, but obviously MANET will be a mobile and the other two can be static. Traffic, usually for MANET, it's between one node to another node, so you can assume that each nodes are the same but for wireless sensor network it will usually be to a sync where kind of the data is kind of gathered and then you go and put it on your cloud-based service uh, then there is also a uh, link capacity link capacity can be varying in terms of manet and uh, wireless sensor network like i said it can be exposed to weather interference or noise so once again uh, it can be confusing with the short forms but uh, these are the general short forms to consider in terms of wireless mesh network. Uh, 
And uh, then we also have a uh, how do we kind of evaluate, you know, let's say for Wi-Fi, if you want to know if it's a good Wi-Fi network, what do you do? You do a trace router, is it? Yeah. And you calculate the time, right? The transmission time for one ping. So here are some of the criteria to consider. So do you want the routing protocol? So uh, this means that the data, how does the data go uh, transmission? Uh, is it proactive, which means you kind of say from beforehand, hey, this sensor node every hour or every three hours will just measure the temperature and uh, put it to the access point. Or it can be reactive as well. Like, you know, when uh, you hear a noise and then you put out the sensor value. Or it can be a hybrid of both. So this is something you have to decide for your mesh network. What about the network organization? If it is flat, this means that every node has exactly the same capability. And if it is hierarchical, it is usually a cluster base. That means there will be a single node that will kind of control the others and maybe the rest will kind of communicate with that node. How about location awareness? Uh, they may or may not use localization systems. So you can think of a sensor node with a GPS location. Or what you can do, you can already configure that node saying that, hey, you are in this position in hackerspace and you do not have any localization um, systems embedded in that node. So it can be both. So these are some things to consider. And lastly, mobility as well, like I said. Uh, what are the different performance metrics? So uh, it's interesting. What is the hop count? So because, you know, it's a mesh network, hop count, so obviously the minimum number of counts it takes is the better. Next is the transmission count and transmission time, if, if, it is, uh, if you're not counting the hop. And the next one is definitely energy consumption, because, um, and it's a challenge in wireless sensor network and mobile ad hoc network, because they are moving and they are not connected to powered uh, lines. And of course, path availability. How do you choose the next node to hop on to? How do you know it is available? And that's the percentage uh, that you count for path availability. All right, uh, this one was, um, okay, this paper basically listed all the different types of um, routing protocols. I think I didn't even, oh no, I should fill this up. Okay, I'll go home and fill it up. But anyway, like for Manet, there were like 15 different types. I think Hussein probably studied all of them. I, I, I'm just quoting them. Uh, but uh, here's a summary I have uh, from the paper. So from Manet, uh, for mobile ad hoc network, is a proactive or a reactive routing protocol preferred? It is more of a proactive because you know you're moving, the nodes are always moving and depending on the position and some events, you want to trigger something. So that's uh, definitely a proactive. Is it a flat hierarchy or, uh, or hierarchical? Every node can have the same function or different function, it can be both. Is it location aware? Yes or no. The metrics in this case has to be hops or distance based because uh, once again, it's a mesh network and you need to know where to uh, hop and then get on. Mobility, yes, of course there is. Uh, for wireless sensor network, yep, it can be proactive or hybrid actually because some of the sensor node might be connected to the wired. Uh, flat or hierarchical, it can be both. In this case, uh, metrics, energy becomes suddenly very, very important because uh, let's say you are using BLE or ZigBee in, the, uh, in this case to power off and it's, a, it's powered by battery. Mobility can once again be yes or no. And similar, uh, the lastly for wireless mesh network, the metrics that becomes important is the transmission time. Bandwidth. What? Bandwidth. Bandwidth, yes, that's right. All right, so um, lastly, how do you design a wireless mesh network routing protocol? I think when this paper was written, just like my prof, th the entire research committee was trying to figure out mesh network routing protocols because traditionally it was the star topology, like where to hop on to the next node. That was like the research challenge. So one of them was if there is low mobility, uh, use the performance metrics, uh, uh, the transmission time. Just like our Wi-Fi, I guess. Like if it is like not really moving around, you can take the time as a performance matrix. But if it is moving around, you can take the number of hops as the performance matrix. And of course, lower the better. Uh, in terms of hardware technology, you can uh, consider the antenna design and the network connectivity. Like I said, uh, to consider which type of wireless communication to use. And based on that, uh, you have the base station and the access points different. 
And the routing protocol, will it be proactive for fixed or will it be hybrid? In fact, a hybrid seems more and more the approach. It seems a bit of both and a link path or uh, that's, that was still unclear, the paper said. Uh, so basically the conclusion is uh, that uh, you need a new routing protocol for wireless mesh network. It cannot be the same as uh, the star topology. And this is because um, you need connectivity any, everywhere. And I think 10 years later, we can see that there are so many different types of wireless uh, mesh networks being de uh, developed. You also want uh, versatility, ease of deployment, low cost, and a network coverage. And uh, uh, this is some more reading that I did, uh, like Zigbee, I just, I was just curious, like Zigbee I know is a mesh network as well. It seems to do an enhanced hierarchical routing protocol to make sure that, you know, that every of your data is kind of going to the proper place. I also did a little bit of reading up on Z-Wave routing. I think Z-Wave is totally proprietary and, uh, yeah, they said like devices can communicate to one another by using intermediate nodes to actively route around and circumvent uh, obstacles or radio dead points. So, so you can see that uh, the concepts discussed in the paper were put on actively and some of them were like hybrid and like cluster based uh, protocols. That's all I have actually. So um, yeah, I would love some questions and discussions maybe like I know some, there are some researchers in the audience who did this. <laughs> Huisin, you have anything to say? <laughs> okay. Um, actually, I was working on like wireless uh, sensor networks and stuff for about I think, six or more years. Okay. You but, um, <laughs> I actually stopped working doing research on networking because I felt that um, the Singapore community, at least in terms of the academic institutions, do not seem to appreciate that much about wireless networking because you can't really see it, right? So, yeah. so when you look at, um, when you try to kind of sell your work, most people outside the research community don't really appreciate like this because they can't see it. To them, it's just like, you know, what is the end product? You know, do you get the data? Do you get um, the type of uh, whatever stuff that you have? But to them, to them, routing is just like, can you just give me the data? I don't really right. care how you do it. Right. <laughs> yeah. But um, okay. it's something that I really love. <laughs> <laughs> okay. But it, it will be s something similar as well, I guess. Uh, different types of routing protocols and how you decide where to implement one. Yeah. But I think most people are probably, as in commercial systems, at least the ones yeah. that I've worked with recently, most of them seem Zigbee to be and, and Z-Wave. Zigbee and Z-Wave? Mm -hmm. How about in uh, low power WAN? Um, that will be, s be Zigbee low power WAN as well. Mm -hmm. In Singapore, or Europe? In Singapore. In Singapore. Yeah. Okay. So, wi wide area network is also uh, still Zigbee. Mm. Yeah. Okay, wide area, I'm not so familiar with. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Most, most of my work is uh, centered around sensor networks. Yes, okay. Right. Um, I had a question about yes. um, the performance metrics. Yes. Uh, can you go to the slide for a second? Oh, sorry, sorry, the other one where you were comparing, um, uh, where you were giving a summary of uh, yes. things for WMNs. Yes. That is further ahead. Oh uh, yeah, that one. Uh, why do performance metrics vary based on mobility? Uh, uh, rather, why do they vary between those two um, kinds of performance metrics based on mobility? Uh, I'm not sure about the link between mobility and you know choosing. Because if a high mobility, how do you get expected transmission time? Yeah. Expected <laughs> transmission time. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Sure. So you use hops in that case, yeah. And why, uh, and because it's a better metric, that's why you use it when you have loops. Yes, okay, yeah. because um, I think in both the cases, I the the performance we're looking at is getting the data yeah. to the access points. Yeah. So the path of division, you said, is clear, but there's still, there's, still, there's still some people working on this. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I think so. Or, or rather 10 years ago, maybe, I, I don't know, Hussein, do you know anything about it? Like link and path optimization. Can I ask? Yes. What will be the relationship between like current, uh, nowadays we are using TCP and UDP? Oh, TCP and UDP is in a different OSI network layer. So if you Google for OSI, right, right, we saying, am I right? <laughs> <laughs> no, the, 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 the expert is here. Yeah. 
spoiling you, right? You shouldn't answer anything until okay, she don't tries. Okay, don't, yes. don't answer Let me. her try first and then... Okay, if I'm wrong, you correct me. So basically in networking, right, there is this something... Oh, okay, you know, yeah, I, what I always do... Images, yeah. exactly. Uh, so if you have a... So there's... Okay, I think this is a good one. Yeah, so um, TCP is... Uh, is this a, TCP is yeah, basically here. So if you view image... So... So this is something I did, yeah. Uh, physical layer will be something like Ethernet, Bluetooth, 802.11 and uh, all the way up is the application layer which is like HTTP and, and FTP and something like that. TCP is in, in the transport layer of the OSI model and what we are talking about uh, in a lot of uh, times is probably in the physical layer, the data link layer. Okay. Yeah. So because uh, like PRDPN now, right? Yeah. Uh, those P2P are currently uh, moving over TCP. Or GDP or yes, so they are at the higher level of networking. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. It's nice to see MIDI. MIDI. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 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 Network layer. Yeah. yeah. The routing protocol falls. Yeah. But either way, TCP and the networking layer are the different layers. Yeah. Yeah. But right. Yeah. So far, yeah. Uh, wireless mesh networking. Or uh, wireless sensor uh, network protocols. Usually, they don't, they don't really use the. Oh, uh, okay. Yeah. Okay. Common transport layer. So they use the networking layer. You just send yeah, direct just frames. Send direct. Yeah. Probably you can consider it. So, how do they display like data in terms of what kind of package? It's customized. It's more like a roll step here. It's more like a I guess the equivalent to that in like uh, the normal world would be if you hooked up a bunch of things to a switch an Ethernet switch, and instead of trying to send UDP or TCP traffic, you just send raw Ethernet frames. Mm -hmm. okay. So you know your MAC address, you know the MAC address of who you're talking to, yeah. you just put data in the frame and you so send it out. So the standard and receiver know the format, yep. mm -hmm. and then the raw yeah. protocol does not care. Yeah. 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 Thanks. I think it's a layer of abstraction that helps yeah. segregate In it. this case, you, it, the more accurate way of saying it is you would actually be sending just IP packets, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. you don't really have any layer on top of that, yeah. except for what you design. Okay. Yeah. Rice. Uh, what, makes, uh, what makes all these layers very <coughs> so special? Wow. It's, it's basically la abstraction, I would say. But what makes it so interesting is that, okay, from a mm. ham, ham radius perspective, I could, even, I could easily take this. I think ham radio is physical layer, right? Uh, yes, it is. Yeah. Right. The whole idea is that I could, e I could easily take this, so called this the physical aspect of thing, and take a, a handy talking, and code the thing as sound. The, all your, your protocol things like your hardware, your data link layer, everything, since this is more of the, the software routing side, you can, you can if you can, of course the, the bandwidth and all that will be limited based on, on for example, your radio that you use, but I would say that you can, you can easily do all sorts of mesh network and you don't, and you don't really need to uh, restrict yourself to the kind of hardware. As long as the equipment, sure. the work, the, 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 how they do their transport and data link layers are, sure. uh, yeah, they can agree on that same. Yeah, level. yeah, absolutely. And that's the that's the whole point of it, I think, uh, to have yeah, the abstraction layers. Yeah, yeah, that's exactly. the whole point. Yeah, absolutely. They can totally do IP standards. Yes. 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 In fact, the other I have been like researching about this so many times. Like when I research about LP WAN, there is this low power. Ah, uh, I forgot where is this. Like. Um, I can't find it, but uh, yeah, this one. Look, look at this view image. Look at this. Um, so this is also using the OSI layer that I said, and this is Sigfox and LoRaWAN, and this is one by TI and XM. But you can also see that uh, this is the physical. They are basically defining the physical layer, and on top is uh, you can just add on your own stuff. So, so one of the, the physical layer is because of the of the broadcasting band that are everything. Uh, yes, that you, are, you are forbidden. But from the transport to all the way to vacation, you are free to do whatever. whatever you yes, want. exactly. So they will not define because they want to keep. And on the network layer, yeah. most of them will just layer IPv6 on top of it yeah. because. That's In fact, six low pan is the IPv6 over. <laughs> Low area network, yeah. Six low pan. That, that's why the name six low pan. Everything uses yeah. eight hundred two fifteen four. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So yeah. that that protocol is very important. Eight eight zero two point fifteen dot four. And if, whenever they're talking about low power WAN, you can go for that and safely 
So now you know if Singapore announces the IoT network, you know it's a low power wide area network. And oh, really? uh, when, when, when? I'm saying when they. <laughs> <laughs> is, is, is that a hint? No, 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 no. No, no, no. I mean, I'm is, sure is Singapore will. So, no, 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 I have so, nothing. So the other interesting one is, uh, I remember when, I think Ibrahim, you were there, we went to a, a seminar by Nordic Semiconductors, they yeah. make Bluetooth yes. uh, chips, yeah. so they have a IPv6 over Bluetooth. So again, ah, same yeah. thing, IPv6, the high level yeah. protocols are the same as what you Correct. hear that normally, but lower Correct. level you can swap out for different things, so. Yeah. So, Sigfox, uh, uh, the, yes. the TI is a big company. What is LoRa? LoRaWAN is another, uh, I hear it's an open protocol okay. as compared to the rest. Uh, LoRaWAN Alliance is like another separate. IoT has so many alliances, mm -hmm. like different alliances. So, they are also trying to do their own. Zigbee is trying to do their own. S same concept as Sigfox. Yeah, S same concept. Idea, they are, open. yeah. Yeah, it's more open. They all define the physical layer and a little bit of the data layer, and then the rest are up to you to define. And today yeah. I learned there's also an LTE advanced spec for yep. this sort of thing. Yeah, there is. Exactly. So yeah, j j just note that when they talk about wide area for devices, it is talking about low bandwidth and wide coverage, yeah. unlike our mobile phone, we'll which is high bandwidth. But the, may, maybe LTE advanced is not the best example because if you look at the number of protocols that are used in LTE, mm -hmm. it's way more than seven layers. Of course. Yeah, yeah, of course. Uh, so I mean, you, this you is just, if simplifying. If you phone, you already just to register to the network. You, I think, use three different servers mm -hmm. because you register at different layers. Yeah. 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 Um. Yeah, I think uh, that's about it. Uh, this paper, like I said, is not technical. You can read through it and yeah, just uh, understand. So yeah. What's the impact factor of the drone? Impact factor? Yeah. Uh, that wireless mesh networks needs a, a different kind of routing protocol rather than the conventional Wi-Fi or the Ethernet. Uh, How about the impact factor of the drone? Impact factor. You know, like a, like a oh, it's like a tier one, tier two. Tier. Yeah, yeah, is that like what? I have no idea what's that. Academia, <laughs> Academia I have no idea what's that. This needs to be a rule in papers we love. It should not be asked and it should not be answered. <laughs> <laughs> this is why engineers and researchers come together in this meetup. <laughs> Which tier is this research paper? Yeah. This one is Springer. Springer, yeah. Uh, is, uh, I have no idea. It's tier one. Okay. Yeah, Atropoli is tier one. one. Yeah. Stringer is... Uh, and probably <laughs> when they publish something about LT, they jump for one month. And of course. Okay. I have no yeah. idea. Yeah. Right, yep, yeah, that's it. Thank you. What happened to... The old joke is that... Oh, the oh, sorry, I'm just going to... I'm going to...